And greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we are here for you. We do a lot of research to bring you the latest topics on health and nutrition, scientifically based evidence of why food and nutritional supplements can provide your best quality of health. Drugs don't provide health. They may prevent death. They may save lives. But you can't count on drugs changing your life. If you want to have a healthy quality of life, then you have to have some changes in the way you live your life. You have to adopt a better quality of diet. And I highly recommend one of three of these diets. I love the ketogenic diet. I live primarily 99% of my time on the ketogenic diet. There's also the paleo diet and also the Mediterranean diet. Now, on the ketogenic diet, which is a diet that is very low in carbohydrates and absolutely no sugar, high-quality protein, and plenty of good quality fats. So, a little bit of my ketogenic diet is a blend of the ketogenic diet and the Mediterranean diet. The people in the Mediterranean countries have far less cardiovascular disease than we do in America, less cancer, less generally all diseases. They they eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, seafood, occasionally meat, But from what the world's experts have told is that the two most common foods that protect their health is olive oil and red wine, which are both used in very large portions in the Mediterranean diet. In the Mediterranean diet, they consume on an average of four tablespoons a day of olive oil and still sprinkled on salads and other foods as well. But they try to consume four tablespoons, which is about a quarter of a cup of olive oil and a glass or two of red wine daily. These two foods I would consider to be the super, super superfoods, especially olive oil. So if you want to change your diet, which I really, really encourage you to do so, if you're unhealthy, you're always sick, always having an infection, cold and flu, never feeling well, exhausted, tired, The diet really supports the quality of your health. And then an uptick, the level of exercise. Don't do excessive exercise, because if you do something excessively, it exhausts you, stresses you out. People that run marathons is not a healthy venture for anybody that wants health. It's a sport. It doesn't make you healthy. Running generally is not healthy. Walking is much healthier than running. And using kettlebells will give you a much better workout in 15 to 20 minutes 
than most any other exercise. And then include good sleep, plenty of sleep, seven, eight, and nine hours a night. You can turn yourself around and have a better degree of health by adopting these new lifestyle choices in three to six months than you would ever do with drugs. Now, if you're on drugs, I'm not encouraging you to drop your drugs. I'm not a physician. I've been in this health food industry for over 50 years, and you sure gain a lot of knowledge in that period of time. And all I do is try to encourage you to make better lifestyle choices. If you're on drugs, I pray that you get off, but not without talking to your doctor first. You and your doctor decide what medication is really, really necessary. And then in time, after you have changed your diet, changed your lifestyle choices, you may be able to get off the rest of your drugs. And I have seen this with many, many people. When I lecture across the country, and my audience comes up and asks questions after I lecture, or they want to share their stories, which I love, and they tell me that they adopted the ketogenic diet, they're outside walking two, three, four times a week, they get better sleep, it's all reducing stress, and their arthritis is gone. They're no longer a type 2 diabetic. Their heart function improves dramatically. Their circulation. This is what I'm talking about in terms of improving the quality of your life by improving the quality of your choices. We choose how we want to live. And there are consequences of the choices that we choose. Make better choices. Health is a choice. Just choose well. Today we have some great featured topics. We're going to talk about a mineral that is not frequently talked about. Not many people know the mineral. And it's called silica. And then we'll also talk about new research on olive oil and the Mediterranean diet plus the brands that I choose to recommend. Not all olive oil is the same. It depends on the type of olive, when it is harvested, how it is harvested, how it is processed, and how the oil is expressed from the fruit, how it is stored. There are many ways to make better olive oil, but sometimes it's more expensive to go that route. And as the oil gets more expensive, and people see cheaper options on the supermarket shelf, they wonder why they want to pay the high price, when isn't all olive oil the same? Absolutely not. And olive oil is made up of a type of oil called omega-9. Oleic oil. Oleic fatty, fatty acids. Now, Other oils, like macadamia, pecan, avocado, are also omega-9. But they don't have what olive oil has. And olive oil has a large, huge quantity of polyphenols. And after vitamins and minerals to maintain our health, polyphenols are the most effective anti-inflammatories. 
antioxidants and play a part in every major disease imaginable. Mary Flynn, Dr. Mary Flynn, associate professor at Boston University, said the only food she knows after 30 years of research on olive oil is that olive oil has the most powerful effect on every major disease in reversing the disease, preventing the disease, and curing the disease. Olive oil is a super, super food. Please try to use more in your diet. If you can't swallow olive oil, try to drink it. Don't just sprinkle it on your food. You don't get very much that way. And a lot of the olive oil that you sprinkle on food stays on the plate, stays on the bowl or in the bowl when you're having a salad. You're wasting the olive oil. Make sure you take one or two tablespoons, preferably four tablespoons a day, off the spoon. Medicine is always taken off the spoon, right? So take your medicine, your olive oil, off the spoon. One to four tablespoons daily. The more, the better. You can't overtake. There are no major side effects. Very, very healthy, very safe. So all these ideas are to make you and I healthier. So we'll talk about the new research on olive oil. And we'll talk about the signs and the symptoms as to why you need more vitamin B12. And do you know that NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, like Advil, Aleve, Tylenol, actually make your arthritis worse because it destroys the cartilage in your joints. And then we'll talk about what you can do to prevent and reverse shingles. And then what two supplements may you need this winter? And there are dangers. Now, I know a lot of people are taking aspirin. You heard it from your doctor. You see it on TV. And Bayer makes billions of dollars on aspirin. But there are dangers that you may not know of from taking aspirin. We have a lot more on the docket. We just may not have enough time to cover all the subjects. So I don't want to waste our time. So let's talk about our future topic, silica. It's a very important mineral. Primarily found in the plant horse tail. Not the horse's tail, but on the plant horse tail. One time I mentioned that, and a lady wrote to me and said, I can't believe that you cut off all the horse's tails just for, for the mineral silica. No, I would not promise I'll never do that. This is a reed, a plant called horse tail. And it's high, <coughs> excuse me, very high in silica. It's a plant related to ferns. It contains almost 80% silica, very rich source of this mineral. And silica is essential for bone formation and remineralization of the bones. Actually, what it does, you don't need a lot of calcium when you're taking silica because silica gets the calcium 
into the bones. It increases calcium absorption and retention of the calcium in bones by up to over 50%. Stronger bones. The number one reason why you want to take silica. Stronger bones. Less risk of fractures. Faster recovery after a fracture. In an animal model, or in, in, in an animal study of osteoporosis, bone deterioration. When silica was associated as a supplement for the animals that had osteoporosis, they increased their bone density by 30%. That is huge. I don't know of a drug that is prescribed for osteoporosis can increase bone density by 30%. So silica outperforms other means or drugs to increase the density of the bone. So this is extremely valuable to know that a natural mineral you can buy in health food stores or buy anywhere and know that it is not having any side effects but increases bone density. That's what you want, bone density by 30%. But now silica is not just for the bones. It's been referred to as the beauty mineral. Why? Because silica is also required to improve collagen formation. Now, a lot of people take collagen, right? Liquid form, powder form, in your drinks, in your coffee, wherever. But silica is what makes collagen work and improve connective tissue, hair, nails, and skin. When women start on silica, their nails get very healthy and much stronger. They do not break off. And it increases collagen formation by over 50%. In a study of women with fine hair, nine months No, nine months. Why? Because hair grows very slowly. So there's not a real pronounced effect in a week or two. It takes months. But nine months of supplemental silica increased hair strength by almost 10%. In women with sun-damaged skin, sun-damaged skin, 20 weeks of silica treatment Reduce skin roughness by almost 20% and strengthen hair and nails. So what should you know about silica? Well, first of all, look for a plant-based silica from horsetail. There are other sources out there, but they're semi-synthetic. And did you know there's another one out there called orthosilic acid, which is synthetic and made from sand. Made from sand. Bamboo silica isn't necessarily absorbed. The silica molecules are so large from the bamboo that silica from bamboo cannot be absorbed and are much, much larger than the silica from horsetail. Horsetail is your best choice. For skin, hair, nails, and basic bone support, bone density, take about 20 milligrams daily. You can increase that dosage if you are really trying to repair skin, hair, nails, rough skin, 
or bone density. You might want to use 20 milligrams three or four times a day. If you have experienced a bone fracture, have osteoporosis, have had dental implants, or have any other bone concerns, 40 to 80 milligrams daily for about four to eight weeks. Now here's some new research I promised in the beginning of my dialogue on the benefits of the Mediterranean diet and olive oil. First of all, you can reduce belly fat. I never thought I would say that. When people ask me how to reduce their belly fat, <clears throat> we never had an answer. Exercise, of course, would be the best way to reduce belly fat and losing weight. But now there's some research that shows from an 18-month study, researchers compared the effects of three different diets on belly fat and the levels of belly fat in average weight middle-aged adults, primarily women. The subjects of this study ate the same total calories from the three different diets daily, but followed one diet only. So there were three groups of people. One group ate the standard American diet, the SAD diet. One group ate the Mediterranean diet, plus 400 milligrams of polyphenols from walnuts. The third group ate the Mediterranean diet, plus 1,200 milligrams of polyphenols that were found in walnuts, green tea, and a green protein shake. Now, the results of this study both Mediterranean diet groups lost about the same amount of weight. But the high polyphenol group had double the loss of belly fat. 14% loss of belly fat versus only 6% loss for the low polyphenol group. Polyphenols are a group of compounds found in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, olive oil, wine. But because Americans consume a high intake of carbohydrates, refined ultra-processed carbohydrates, and sugar, very few Americans consume enough polyphenols daily. And the average amount of polyphenols that should be consumed daily by experts is 1,000 milligrams of polyphenols. It has been estimated that most Americans are less than 100 milligrams, only 10% of what they should be getting. Belly fat, or the visceral fat, it is, it, as it is known, is the most dangerous kind of fat. Why? This kind of fat produces an excessive amount of, of uh, estrogen in men. That's why men get flabby, lose their muscle strength, have man boobs, and lose their energy. This dangerous kind of fat also causes inflammation that damages organs like the heart, kidneys, liver, and increases the risk of other serious diseases. Polyphenols is a group of about 8,000 different kinds of polyphenols, 
known as bioflavonoids, anthocyanidins, flavonoids, and olive oil has one of the highest levels of polyphenols and are able to prevent prostate and breast cancer. Prostate and breast cancer, respectfully, men and women, is the second leading cause of cancer in both men and women. Prostate cancer in men, of course, and breast cancer in women. Colon cancer is the number one killer in the category of cancer. Treatment-resistant metastatic Prostate cancer is the most dangerous form of prostate cancer. Metastatic means cancer has spread from the prostate to other areas of the body and much, much more difficult to treat and recover. Treatment resists means standard cancer drugs can't stop the cancer from spreading or recover. There is a compound in olive oil called oleocanthinol. And it is a very powerful compound from olive oil. It causes the peppery burning in the throat when swallowing olive oil. So you want olive oil that leaves a stinging, peppery, spicy burning in the back of your throat. It's only going to last for a few seconds. But this shows that it has a high level of the oleocanthinol, this is the compound in olive oil, and previous research has found that oleocanthinol can stop breast, prostate, and pancreatic cancer cells. In this new study, in an animal model of metastatic treatment-resistant prostate cancer, oleocanthinol inhibited further cancer spreading by 83%. And after surgery removal of the tumor, 30 days of this compound in treatment was 100% effective at preventing cancer from reappearing. I've got to take a break, folks. This is my end of my first portion of the program. Come back. I'm going to be here for our second portion of the program. This is Terry Naturally. Terry Talks Nutrition. Back right after this. Welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally, and this is Terry Talks Nutrition. I was watching the clock on the wall, and I was running down to the last few seconds to the first portion of my program, and I rushed through what I wanted to say about olive oil to prevent prostate cancer and breast cancer. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to, I, it's, a, it's a topic too important not to really have you gain all the benefits of this compound. Now, this compound called oleocanthal, oleocanthal, O-L-E-O-C-A-N-T-H-A-L, oleocanthal, a very powerful compound from olive oil. Now, that's what causes when you consume olive oil, especially without dipping it, dipping bread into olive oil or sprinkling it on your salad, because all those other foods don't let you really taste the olive oil. And if you really want to taste wine, you don't mix it in something else. You taste wine and determine if, if it's the kind you like or if it has a, a moldy taste or if it has a corky taste. And it's the same with olive oil. In fact, pour a little bit of olive oil in a shot glass. Put your hand over it for about five seconds to warm it up a little bit. And then drink it. Drink about a half a shot glass full of olive oil. And if it leaves a peppery, spicy, burning sensation in the back of your throat, you're tasting the oleocanthal. Now, there was a researcher many years ago, 10, 20 years ago, that was working on ibuprofen. 
And they were making a liquid ibuprofen. And when he drank the liquid ibuprofen, it left a very peppery, burning, spicy taste in the back of his throat. So when he became aware of olive oil and the compound of oleocanthal, it rang a bell for him. And he said, when I drink the liquid ibuprofen, I have the same sensation as when I take olive oil that has a high concentration of the oleocanthal. So oleocanthal has an effect similar to ibuprofen. But it also can be used to treat resistant metastatic prostate and breast cancer which is the most dangerous form of these two kinds of cancer. Metastatic means the cancer has spread from the prostate or the breast to other areas of the body, like brain, liver, bone, wherever. It makes it much more aggressive, much less able to be treated with any, any means whatsoever. And treatment resistant means standard cancer drugs can't stop the cancer from spreading. And it spreads much more aggressively, much quicker. And the oleocanthal is a very powerful compound and is found only in olive oil. Doesn't You can't find it anywhere else but in the olive oil. But if you have olive oil that tastes very buttery and no taste whatsoever after you swallow it, I would not recommend that olive oil. Now, all extra virgin olive oil, if it's not fake, if it's really true extra virgin olive oil, will contain a certain level of the oleocanthal. But you wanted to find one that is really, really potent. In fact, I've tasted some olive oil. And it can actually have you cough or choke a little bit. Just a minor sensation. But believe me, it's worth it. And, and all the previous research on this compound. Think about this. This is a compound that's natural. This is a compound that's found in olive oil. This is food. And it has been found to be able to stop breast, prostate, and pancreatic cancer cells from spreading, forming new cancer in other areas of the body. Now, the study on oleocanthal in animals, they had the same kinds of cancer. Metastatic treatment resistant prostate, breast, or, or uh, pancreatic cancer. The oleocanthal inhibited further cancer spreading by 83%. And after a surgical removal of any tumor, 30 days of oleocanthal was 100% effective at preventing cancer from reappearing, of having a second type of cancer, which then becomes more aggressive and more difficult to be treated. This is a very powerful anti-cancer compound found only in olive oil. See what we have available for us that doesn't require drugs? Very, very powerful. So that's why I like to conclude it in my diet. Now, there are brands of olive oil that I use myself. Now, the one that I have, I have tasted in the past year, I probably have tasted 25 to 50 different brands of olive oil. I was seeking the olive oil for my personal use. 
I want the best. If we're going to support the health of our body, and we a lot of we want to be in the best of our health, then we need to find the best way to accomplish that. And I don't recommend drugs. That's only up to you and your doctor. Now, there are some good olive oils out there. But I wanted the one that was the premier, premier olive oil. And I found it. It's a Greek olive oil. I'll spell it for you because the way you would pronounce it based on the spelling, it's spelled Cure. C-U-R-E. That's not the name of the olive oil. That's the way you would say it because the word is spelled the olive oil brand that I selected as my top brand, premier brand that I use personally for myself, is spelled K Y O O R D. It's a Greek oil having the highest polyphenol content of all olive oil that I've tested. I've tasted. And there are thousands out there. But this, I am sure, is one of the top oils in the world. Now, they make a very premium, extra virgin olive oil, first cold pressing, Greek olive oil, and they do it in a way to increase the polyphenols because that's what we want from the olive oil, the polyphenols. And this oil is called the governor. G-O-V-E-R-N-O-R, the governor, premium extra virgin olive oil from the company Cured, K-Y-O-O-R-D. Now, I have tasted others, and none of them, in my opinion, has come close to the governor, premium extra virgin olive oil, the first cold pressing, a Greek oil from the right type of olives, and it's put out by the company called Cured, spelled K-Y-O-O-R-D. So look for that, or you can find it online. That's that's the one I prefer. Uh, It's expensive compared to a lot of other oils out there. You can get some very cheap olive oils but they're not going to give you what you want if you want health. Now, I'm all sure, I'm sure that you all have heard about vitamin B12. But I'd like to talk about some of the signs and the symptoms you need that will show you that you need more vitamin B12. And some of these symptoms, you know, many of the diseases that we are being treated with drugs, many Americans are treated with drugs for what drug companies call diseases are only a deficiency of a vitamin or mineral. If you don't have enough zinc and selenium, you are a candidate for viral infection. When you get viral infection, only drugs can treat viral infection legally. But it's primarily a deficiency of zinc and selenium. The drug companies own treatment. They control every disease imaginable and it only can be treated by the drug made by the drug companies. They control sickness and health, and they prefer sickness. You sell more of the product of choice, right? Drug companies want to sell more drugs, right? Why not? They have shareholders to account to. So they want their stock to go up. 
They're looking for ways to increase drug therapy, drug dependency. So if you have a deficiency from a lack of a nutrient, which there are many deficiencies and many signs and symptoms of those deficiencies, you can't treat it with a vitamin and mineral. The drug companies have tied up everything around illness, sickness, and so-called health. And vitamin B12 is a relatively common deficiency, but often missed by doctors. Because they're not thinking about vitamins and minerals. They're thinking about drugs. They have been brainwashed that nothing can cure but drugs. I had a gentleman that was trying to cure a problem and his doctor recommended a drug. And he said, I don't want drugs. I want to do this with food. And the doctors, two, two doctors, two separate occasions laughed and said, food can't do anything. Well, why do we eat food? Why do we take vitamins and minerals? Why are, why are there these compounds like polyphenols and vitamins and minerals in food? That's what kept humans alive for millions of years. Drugs are not the answer. They may be temporarily helpful to save lives, but they're not going to make you healthy. Vitamin B12 is vital for brain health and red blood cell production and many other functions as well. And especially in older adults, vitamin B12 deficiency and their symptoms may be mistaken for other problems such as dementia. And so they're looking for drugs to treat dementia, Alzheimer's disease. What, but what, it, in fact, the problem is easily treatable. Older adults may have insufficient stomach acid, which leads to reduced vitamin B12 absorption. Vegetarians or vegans are also at risk of vitamin B12 deficiency as dietary vitamin B12 is found primarily in animal and dairy products, meat, fish, eggs, milk, and cheese. And we need B12 daily. So here are some of the warning signs of a B12 deficiency. Symptoms of a B12 deficiency can include ringing in the ears. I know a lot of people that have asked me for a, why, why do I have ringing in my ears? What can I do for it? And ringing of the ears is a classic symptom of a vitamin B12 deficiency. Second, fatigue and shortness of breath. Diarrhea. A swollen tongue. Muscle spasms and twitches. Confusion. And memory loss. Struggling to find the right words. Numbness, tingling, and strange sensations in the hands. Arms, legs, and feet. Poor focus and concentration. Poor ability of learning skills. Many of the 12 B12 deficiencies include mental instability. These are all common conditions that are then treated by drugs, because anytime you have an illness, a disease, or symptoms out of the ordinary, 
No one can recommend a vitamin and mineral for a condition. Only a drug cures anything. Does not, in my estimation, clear, heal anything or heal anything. But the drug companies have gained so much control over what is prescribed. So think about these deficiencies. B12, ringing in the ears. Very, very common. Fatigue and shortness of breath. Swollen tongue. Muscle spasm and twitches. Confusion, memory loss. Struggling to find the white words. Trying to find out why you walked into the other room. Numbness, tingling, strange sensations. Numbing and tingling in the arms, legs, and feet. Poor concentration. Poor ability of learning skills. Now we have another condition that can make arthritis worse. If you have arthritis and you're trying to treat it with NSAIDs like Aleve or Advil or Tylenol, in time, it's going to make the arthritis worse. Oh, good. Here I'm taking it to try to get healthy. Well, drugs, first of all, don't make you healthy. If you want a little bit of a relief, there are many, many natural compounds that can give you pain relief or arthritis relief like curcumin, like boswellia, like rose hips, a very special peel from the rose hips that has been studied to reduce arthritis. There are many ways that natural alternatives can reduce the pain of arthritis or any pain in muscles or joints. But NSAIDs now, which everybody jumps on, Tylenol, Aleve, Advil, don't help your joints. This is based on research. I'm not gaining any benefit from telling you this. But researchers evaluated joint inflammation, the pain in your joints, the swelling of your joints. They also studied the cartilage quality in 277 patients with moderate to severe arthritis who then took NSAIDs like ibuprofen or Tylenol or Neprosyn for at least one year versus the same evaluations in almost 800 people with arthritis who did not take these drugs. Now, all the subjects in this study had MRIs of their knees at the, study, at the, at the start of the study and four years later. The results, actually, absolutely, no benefits from NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Tylenol, Aleve, Advil. They had no benefits in reducing inflammation or protecting joint cartilage. Actually, the joints of these subjects, human studies, taking these NSAIDs were worse off than the control group, both at baseline and four years later. These drugs don't work. You're wasting your time and your money and your health. Because, for example, Tylenol, it's the number one cause of liver failure in the United States. 
and it kills 16,000 people annually. Now, that's serious side effects. And it's not giving you any benefit. So how do you keep your knees healthy? Well, there is a good formula for healthy knees, which includes 3,000 IU of vitamin D3, plus 1,560 milligrams of curcumin, boswellia, and boron. Why the vitamin D? For healthy knees. A recent study found that men with low vitamin D levels were twice as likely to have arthritis than men with sufficient vitamin D levels. What about boron? Called fructoborate. It's a natural food source food source, fruit source, of boron. There is a marker that measures the level of inflammation. It's called the C-reactive protein. Your doctor can use this marker to determine the level of inflammation in your body. When boron was consumed in this formula, it reduced up to 37% the symptoms of arthritis. And curcumin and boswellia has been shown in many studies to reduce arthritis pain and increase mobility as effectively as prescription drugs, such as Celebrex, without the adverse effects. No known side effects. So put this formula together. Vitamin D3, fructoborate, curcumin, boswellia. You might even find a formula like this on the shelf in one of your health food stores. This is a formula that has been researched successfully and effectively and studied to reduce the symptoms of arthritis. Now, some people struggle with shingles. I heard this from a lady in one of my letters from one of my listeners. She says, please help Terry. I keep having shingle outbreaks. Well, shingles is caused by the same virus that gave us chickenpox as kids. The virus never leaves the body, but stays dormant in the body for years until the immune system is weakened after an illness or during a high stress period. To deal with a shingles outbreak, this is what I would suggest, and I've seen it work over and over and over again. Elderberry that neutralizes the virus and activates the immune system. Take about 300 milligrams of elderberry with vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamin D3, vitamin E, calcium, lactate, magnesium, zinc, selenium, and citrus bioflavonoids. This is a formulation that knocks out shingles, never going to go away, but creates where they become dormant again. They're not active. Plus, you can add 200 milligrams of propolis once or twice daily and support the nerves with vitamin B6, vitamin B12, biotin, folate, pentothetic acid, alpha lipoic acid, chromium, zinc, and boswellia. The virus is never going to go away, but you can maintain a healthy environment, a healthy immune system that stops the virus from breaking out and causing shingles. And with that, my friends, I've got to say goodbye on an early time. So do something constructive this week 
to provide a better degree of your health. And say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.